when there's a smile on your heart, it's the perfect time to start a game of Lurkana. Excellent. Let's start. So we have Edmund Chu over here on the left, player one, and Jordan Serio on the right, player two. And what do you think uh, these players are thinking here in this matchup? I know that Ruby Amy, that, that perfect start to the game is that Flynn Sisu combo. Um, and then this uh, Emerald Amber deck, though, what is Jordan looking to do here? I mean, he's looking to execute his game plan. The interesting thing here, you know, in this dynamic is Edmund, um, or Jordan, this is a deck that he's planned to play. It's a very popular deck, and so Jordan has probably worked numerous reps with this deck against a Ruby Amethyst deck, and so he kind of knows what his game plan is going to be. Edmund, on the other hand, this is probably not a deck that he yeah. prepared terribly well for, uh, terribly much for, and so he's having to study that deck between rounds, figure out exactly what his game plan is, and kind of up with, come up with a course of action here um, prior to the start of this round, so. Yeah, we yeah. did see Jordan open, uh, or Alter's opening hand with getting three new cards. I believe it looks like Edmund took just one card, which means he probably had a lot of the cards that he wanted to see in his opening hand. Yeah, so what Jordan's going to hope to do, I think, is first off, get a Diablo online as fast as possible. Uh, this, uh, Edmund's got kind of two things he wants to do in his opening. One is to try to get Frenemy, uh, Flynn Rider Frenemy online as soon as possible to get an early lore lead. These Ruby uh, Amethyst decks tend to be aggressive in this format, and if you can get a Flynn online, and get six or nine lore out of it in the early game that sets you up for success in the long game. And so Edmund, uh, or Jordan rather, doesn't have many cards that will deactivate that Flynn Rider, interestingly enough. Looking at his list, there is one. It's Sir Hiss. It's a 3-1 on turn two, which is the one card that he probably wants to play or he's hoping to mulligan into. Yeah, he does of, have it. And there it is. Yes, yeah, he does have it in hand, so that's really nice. So his perfect opening in this game is probably the Diablo on turn one to look at the hand into the Sir Hiss on turn two two to turn off that Flynn Rider frenemy if it comes into play, and then perhaps a shift in Diablo on turn two or three to start taking advantage of that card draw, um, which there's plenty of in Amethyst. Yes, the, yeah, the, this Ruby Amethyst deck is known for its card draw, and we did to get, get a full look there at Edmund's hand because of the Diablo that was played, and there's unfortunately not a Sisu for following up this Flynn. Um, so that kind of puts Edmund in an unfortunate position there to not have that because it, it is a really strong combo that the Ruby Amethyst player wants to see. No, that, that's right. That is a card that you want to get on the board for a couple reasons here. In this matchup, uh, not only does Sisu help Frenemy activate, but Jordan has a lot of removal that's based on your character strength. And mm -hmm. so there's the... Um, the Under the Sea, which is the Sing Together card, which sends all cards strength two or less to the bottom of the deck. There's also the Muses, which yes. care about your opponent's character strength. And so Sisu is a card that's very difficult uh, to deal with for Jordan because he's left with a choice of either bouncing it with Mother Knows Best or running several challenging with several characters and having to two for one a very strong Sisu. Yeah. So we did see Maleficent being played over here by Edmund. He got Be Prepared, which is not a card you want to see necessarily this early in the game. <laughs> no, it, it isn't. And um, Jordan here doing everything he wants to do. He's got the Diablo on the board, so he's going to be able to take advantage of Edmund's card draw. Here he is able to look for different songs. He's, yes, is he is taking... found that Under the Sea. That Under the Sea. It's an interesting choice because that's a card that he wants uh, definitely for later game, uh, perhaps in the mid game. But unfortunately with Ariel, you have to telegraph it. Uh, so now Edmund knows that that is 100% available to Jordan. Jordan, uh, Edmund ha is able to play around it a little bit. So, you know, Edmund knows what Jordan has and Jordan knows that Edmund knows what Jordan has. So we'll see how they play around that. Yes. And then, of course, Jordan knows what Edmund has a little bit too from playing that Diablo. So they, they all have, they both have a lot of information. A lot of knowledge here. <laughs> yes, a lot uh, of knowledge. So uh, Tale as Old as Time here. Uh, Maleficent on turn three into Friends from the Other Side on turn four. Um, unfortunately with Di for Edmund with uh, Diablo on the board, it's you draw a card, I draw draw a card. So yes. Jordan getting to draw an extra two cards off that uh, friend from the other side. Yes, and of course that Flynn is just sitting there not doing much, unfortunately, because Sir Hiss with that three strength and then of course you have Diablo and Ariel that both have the same strength as Flynn. Uh, he's not able to kick off that extra three lore. That's right. You know, and it talk it's just the importance of teching and thinking about matchups because I guarantee that Sir Hiss is in this deck 90% of the reason is for Frenemy yes. and, and to shut that down on turn two. So um, we're seeing exactly the reason that card was meant to be put in this deck. Yep. Oh, there we have 
Ariel singing together with Diablo for eight to sing under the sea. And we say goodbye. All of your characters are, are going down under the sea. <laughs> under the sea. <laughs> under, and under the, at, to the bottom of your deck. Where the grass might be greener, but it's not, not as good down there for, for Edmund Chu. No. So, and uh, we're seeing all the, the tools at work here. So now, um, not only did we send the rabbit to the bottom of the deck, not allowing Edmund to take advantage of any bounce combos, but Jordan got an... Uh, Nope, I'm sorry. Jordan didn't get a card off the rabbit because it's during his turn. So, yeah. um, But then we have a uh, discard happening, but Prince John comes into play to allow Jordan to draw a card off the discard. So um, Jordan just getting significant hand advantage here, drawing off the Diablo every turn. Here he's going to draw another card off the rabbit and then drawing an extra card off the discard. So the card advantage here is, uh, is going to be significant for Jordan unless that Diablo is dealt with soon. Yeah, and Ruby Amethyst, like you said, Amethyst has so many cards that are great for drawing cards, but Edmund hasn't really been able to kick off a lot of those. That's true. So one of the things that Jordan's thinking about here, he knows that Be Prepared is available, so he's kind of trying to build up his post-Be Prepared hand at this point. He needs to put enough on the board that Edmund's forced to play it, but then uh, Jordan's already planning right now, what am I going to drop on the board immediately after that Be Prepared? And so drawing these cards to give you those options is is good. Although, yeah. perhaps it won't be available. Ah, uh, Fair yeah. Necessity is coming down. Now, that's a hard... Is that a hard choice? I feel like Queen's Castle is such a strong card, and bare necessities would allow him to force the discard of a queen's castle. Yeah, no, it's it's a very interesting <laughs> choice, right? Because queen's castle is a card that um, Edmund would love to use to close out games. That's what this deck does. And Jordan doesn't necessarily have a lot of removal for locations. However, the biggest anti-location card that Jordan has available right now is Cricky. Mm -hmm. um, when Cricky comes into play, giving all of his characters plus three strength would allow him to deal with a castle or two pretty easily if he's got the cards to support it. Um, in this case, it won't matter because ah. uh, <laughs> we see you have forgotten me forcing uh, an empty hand there and just attacking, um, attacking the hand of the Ruby Amethyst player there. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what Edmund changes uh, too much as far as his game plan goes. I mean, it's the same thing he's trying to execute last game. I think the Sisu is definitely a card you want to see. It allows you to control the board a little bit if any of Jordan's characters are vulnerable. But you also need some early game removal as early as possible to, to take care of that Diablo. Yeah. Um, Jordan's going to try to get a Diablo on board as soon as possible again. And so you need to take care of that quickly or else the card advantage just becomes almost insurmountable. Yeah. And it's hard, I think, with on Ruby Amethyst, there's not a lot of early removal options, I don't think. No, there is Brawl. Um, Brawl is the one that Edmund's going to mulligan or alter his hand very strongly for. And you see he does have a Brawl in his opening few cards. Um, that is a card he definitely, definitely he wants. wants to have in his yes. opening hand. Now, knowing that Bare Necessities, though, is out there, and that's <laughs> going to be something that Jordan would be looking for that Brawl to discard out of his hand, uh, you know... That that's tough. It's so tricky. This is one of the reasons Diablo is such a, a strong play, being able to shift it on turn two, because there's a scenario where Diablo on turn one, shift Diablo on turn two, sing Bare Necessities, and yeah. pick that Brawl, which would right then remove Diablo. Yeah. Um, so God, it's just a Diablo is such a, a difficult card to deal with uh, when you can shift it on turn two. Yeah, and it's interesting when you have cards like Bare Necessities or like a card like Ursula that can discard a song that it's like you, you really want certain cards in your hand uh, at the opening to be able to answer your opponent's board, but there's that risk there of having those cards removed. So it uh, kind of puts you in a tricky situation. It does. It does. Um, so I'm looking at Jordan's hand. We do see the Diablo. I'm sure we'll see it. There it is. We'll take a look at the hand here. We'll all take a look at the hand. Yes. And look at this. We do see the Brawl. We see the Sisu. We see the Frenemy. So three cards Edmund uh, likes to have in his opening hand. Yes. I, I don't see... Uh, I don't see bare necessities on Jordan's side. I do see you have forgotten me, though, which would force him to discard two cards. We see that Diablo. I saw also saw an Ariel, so he can find some song cards. So maybe he'll look for a bare necessities. Maybe he will. Um, we also, let's see what else. I'm trying to look at his hand. Kita, Diablo, Sudden Chill. Uh, maybe yeah. the Sir Hiss there, I think, that we have. Yep. So let's see. We do have the Diablo shift available. And we do have the Sir Hiss to shut down the frenemy. So again, a card that Jordan is putting here most definitely to deal with the frenemy. Um, so it'll come down here and prevent frenemy from activating. Um, of course, Edmund then has the Sisu answer on turn three, which is going to be a difficult amount of strength to overcome. So perhaps we will see a Flynn activation here. One of the things I love about Flynn is that in the art, he's got the 
that little knapsack, you know, where he's running away. He's just robbed some stuff. And I feel like that's what he does here in the game. He's like running away with three lore on turn when his ability is activated. Absolutely. <laughs> so here's an interesting decision. Uh, Jordan chooses to trade the Diablo for the Schoenerbug's followers. Uh, the big, uh, rather than leverage the shift, uh, if that, if he wanted to do that, the big consideration here, I think, is hand size. Uh, Edmund is putting a lot of characters on the board. We know we have uh, an action in hand which he could use to get rid of Diablo, so that's you know, a line that's available. Um, and Jordan, perhaps, is probably making the consideration that I'd rather prevent that one extra card from Chernobyl's followers because mm -hmm. uh, if, if he can get to turn four and use the You Have Forgotten Me and perhaps sing a sudden chill, because uh, I believe that's available as well, uh, we can put Edmund into top deck mode very quickly here. Yeah. We do see that Ariel went into the inkwell, and we're playing that Prince John, which, oh man, that Prince John has done a lot of work in these um, both the Emerald and Amber decks that we've seen play today. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, Prince John is a card that was very popular in the early discard meta back in set two. Fell out of favor. It's back now. It's a card that says whenever your opponent discards a card, you get to draw a card. So we're definitely seeing Jordan set up that discard uh, combo coming up with Sudden Chill, You Have Forgotten Me. And we did see that Edmund did find that Sisu, which is great for him because that really helps with the frenemy and that ability kicking off. So he did get the three lore from uh, Flynn on his this last turn, which is really, really fantastic for Edmund to take that early game lead. Of course, as we've seen, having that early game lead does not always guarantee you a win. No, that's true. So it is really interesting here because I think Jordan is setting up uh, to empty Edmund's hand. But as you pointed out, Edmund able to gather six lore here with the Flynn Rider. The Sisu is a very strong character, very difficult for Jordan to deal with. He's going to have to trade several characters or find the exact right removal card in order to deal with it. So Edmund, you know, in this deck wants to get into the late game. Uh, if It wants to collect lore early as it's been doing, but then it wants to get to 10, 11, 12 lore, get into the late game where it can use castles to close things out and perhaps go and go bounces. So Edmund kind of doing what he needs to do to drive the lore total here in the early game with that frenemy. It is setting himself up for success later, although we're going to have to do it in top deck mode potentially because we are, we're we're about to lose the majority of our hand. Yeah, he did just have to discard two cards there with it. You have forgotten the action being played. Uh, and he had to get rid of that brawl, which I know he would have liked to have kept in his hand. And I didn't see what the other card was that he put down. He has a friend's in hand, and that might be it? Or does he have another card behind I there? I think that is it. So the rabbit represents a card when it's removed, and we do have the friends able to recharge the hand a little bit. Um, so we'll sing friends with the rabbit, draw two cards, draw into another brawl, and we also draw into a snake, which can bounce the rabbit and give him another card. So this is uh, a game of card advantage at this point, and Edmund drawing into all the right cards to keep his hand uh, alive here. Uh, here we are bouncing the rabbit, drawing another card. The rabbit's now available to be played. Um, so kind of drawing into the right things, questing for two of the Sisu, pushing himself to 11. So looking very, very good here. Yeah, and again, he did get that three lore off of Flynn at the beginning of his turn. So yeah, up to 11 already, and Jordan just sitting at two. Yeah, that, again, I'll, I'll point out that Sisu is one of the critical cards in this matchup for a variety of reasons. Jordan just doesn't have a lot to deal with it. And in particularly when you play it with the Flynn Rider, it's representing five lore a turn, three off the Flynn and then two on the quest. And Jordan just is, is looking for ways to answer it right now. Yeah, last game, Jordan definitely had all the cards that he wanted when he wanted them. And this game, he's not quite there. He has some answers, just nothing for the Sisu, unfortunately, that I can see. And I th so it's interesting, Jordan did has ways to win this game. Last game, he won by attacking his opponent's hand or uh, impacting his opponent's hand and, and removing those cards, removing Edmund's options. This game, he pursued a very similar strategy, I think, setting up for those discards, but Edmund just drew into the right cards. And so Edmund able to recharge a little bit, give himself just enough to keep this game going. And... Uh, I'm not sure how Jordan's going to answer that Sisu. That, gonna that's how we're going to answer the Sisu. He's going to trade two characters into it. He said, I really don't like that Sisu there, so I'm willing to banish two of my own characters by challenging into it. It is really the only answer. There's one other uh, with the hand size the way that it is right now, and that is Mother Knows Best, which is available. But uh, at this point in the game, you know that makes the Sisu available to be played again. So that bounces back to the hand. Edmund would be able to play it. So here we do see the Kida. Kida is a great card from Atlantis. I love the art on this. Uh, 
Atlantis, I know, is not a really popular Disney movie. It kind of was in a time, I think, you know, when people weren't, I don't know, it's not a musical, and but it's such a great movie, and I'm so glad that we've gotten some characters from that in, in the game, and Kida is just fantastic and is fantastic in this game, in this deck. You're right. Beautiful art, fun movie, kind of played in, a, in, a, in an era where some people yeah. were falling away from Disney, but it's a wonderful movie. I love it so much. Yeah, if you haven't seen Atlantis, Great if, you're, if you're watching, if there's are, and that some of the characters are, we need more of the Atlantis characters in this game for sure. I, I love it so much. Watch Atlantis. Watch um, Atlantis. But Kita's a, a fantastic card in this deck when it comes into play. All characters get minus three strength until, until the start of your next turn. So it's somewhat of a defensive card, but it also sets up nicely for a card like Under the Sea, which cares about the strength of your opponent's characters. Unfortunately, not enough resources available for Jordan to take advantage of Under the Sea. We know that is in his hand. Um, but we will use Kita to sing uh, We Don't Talk About Bruno. That, and You can't talk about it. I have, yeah. to, I have to talk about it. <laughs> we just played it. So yes. We Don't Talk About Bruno, a card that sends a character, or a character back to your opponent's hand, and then that player discards a card at random. Yeah, that's why you saw them rolling the dice there, which really does help make it very random. And uh, unfortunately, he lost that Madame Medusa, which uh, that's such a great card in the Ruby Amethyst deck. And, you know, will we see the Flynn come down again? Or is Flynn now ink? Um, Flynn might be ink. Uh, sometimes you see players set up the frenemy in the late game after a B prepared, uh, mm -hmm. once they've cleared their opponent's board. So we might save it for that, but it is a very tempting ink target. Bad and Medusa, probably a pretty nice hit for, yes. uh, for that, that discard. Yes, friends, off friends on the other side. He, his friends were at work there. But now friends from the other side being sung by the rabbit, again giving Edmund the cards he needs. And so Ruby Amethyst is really in its element here with rabbits on the board, bounce cards available. We've got some removal options. We have another friends from the other side in hand. Madame Medusa now is going to take care of that Diablo to get that draw engine offline for Jordan. And it's a really tough spot for, for Jordan here. Yeah, this game has really gone back and forth. I felt like game one, Jordan was just able to do everything he wanted and Edmund couldn't find the answers. But this time around, it's really kind of going back and forth. Even though Edmund is at 11, Jordan's only at two lore, but that doesn't mean he's out of the game by far. No, and a great play here, playing the Ursula Deceiver, able to pick that next friends, leaving Edmund with two cards in hand. Uh, unfortunately for Jordan, we still have one of them is a rabbit, which again will give you more cards. Jordan really has, you know, two ways out of this game. One is to eventually clear the board and then, you know, set up his characters to quest out. Uh, the other option is to really attack Edmund's hand and get rid of those those cards so Edmund just doesn't have anything to play. Yeah, and he, he did also play a Sudden Chill there. Another card from all the way back in set one. Uh, sudden Chill, of course, coming from the Cruella de Vil song. You know, uh, such, such a great card and the art and everything, but forcing uh, Edmund to discard down to just one lonely rabbit in hand. One lonely rabbit, but a good card to have. The rabbit is one of the best cards in the game, I think. It gets you two cards, potentially more, when you pair it with bounces. And it's exactly what Edmund wants to be playing in the end game here to draw cards to get him towards his answers. And we drew another one. So yes. rabbits everywhere. Rabbits everywhere. He also has a queen's castle in hand, which uh, we haven't seen. Uh, now does he have two queen's castles? Um, queen's castles in play much uh, from any of the Ruby Amethyst deck today that I've seen, and it's going into the inkwell, does he put the Queen's Castle down so that if he can get a be prepared or something, that he can keep that location on board? It's an interesting play because one of the end games that this deck likes to do, and we've seen it in other, other events, is get to the end game, build up a couple castles in hand, and then play two, sometimes three castles simultaneously, which is just way too much willpower for your <laughs> opponent to deal with to close out the game. And of course, Jordan doesn't have a lot of answers. He does have Cricky, which I think is his castle answer. But here, choosing to ink it instead, and I think what the game plan here is, Edmund's at 12 lore. The closer you get to 20, the closer you are from a goat being able to close you out the game. So Edmund is perfectly content to take one, two, three lore a turn from his characters and uh, wanted to get that rabbit on the board to recharge his hand a little bit and perhaps get a, a lore off of it before drawing another card. Yeah. Now, he did just sing Painting the Roses Red, which is a card that reduces the strength of a chosen character, and then uh, the Muse's ability kicks off so that he can bounce a card back to hand. 
and on Edmund's side, he did actually draw that be prepared on this turn. So he he has that ready to go when he feels like it's needed. Yeah, an interesting choice there. Bouncing the rabbit back to hand gets that quest off the board. And uh, although Edmund does get to draw a card off of it, which, which doesn't feel great, but uh, now Edmund only able to quest for two rather than the three. So getting closer and closer here to goat range. And there's our be prepared. Be prepared. <laughs> there it is. I don't sing it as well as uh, a Baker does. <laughs> yes, yes. But just too much there. Uh, Jordan, no. We highlighted last game. I think one of the big differences last game was the Sisu on turn three. Absolutely. I mean, that. Yeah. Having Flynn down and then without that Sisu in game one just really didn't help Edmund at all. Flynn was not doing anything out there on the board. So, yeah, that Sisu really made the difference. It, the Sisu represented, I think, when you consider the frenemy lore and the quest lore, it must have been 10 or 12. I don't know. Uh, but it was quite a bit of the lore that Edmund accumulated at the end of the game was off that one card combined with, with frenemy. Yeah. So I'm sure as he's altering his hand, that's... Really, Edmund is looking for Flynn Sisu. That's true. Flynn Sisu. The other one is the brawl, and not because it was ever played, but I do think the fact that Edmund had the brawl in hand meant that Jordan chose not to use the Diablo in the early game because it was an easy target for brawl. And so perhaps that affected his thinking. Um, so even just having the brawl and Jordan knowing the brawl is available um, made his decision-making a little, a little different. The other problem with Brawl is it's an action and not a song. So Jordan does have Deceiver, which can take care of songs in Edmund's hand, but cannot take care of the Brawl as it can't be sung. Yes, which is why that Bare Necessities comes in handy on Jordan's side, because that allows you to discard any non-character card. Yes, and so here we do see, speaking of Deceiver, we see a couple there. Mm -hmm. We are going to hear Inca Diablo rather than play the Diablo. Uh, so without the shift line available, uh, Jordan decides, I'm not going to take a look at your hand. I'm not going to threaten that. Um, I know the brawl is something you probably uh, altered your hand for. So inking the Diablo instead of playing it on turn one. Yeah, it doesn't look like Edmund has that Sisu. He does have a Flynn in hand. He also has a goat, some rabbits, but yeah, not again, not finding that Sisu here at the opening of the game. That's true. And I also don't see a Sir Hiss, which again is Jordan's ideal turn to play to take care of that front of me. So instead, we'll see an Ursula Deceiver. So rather than taking a look with the Diablo, we'll take a look on turn two with the Deceiver. There are no songs available, but we do have some of the cards that Edmund needs to keep his hand going. We have, the well, particularly the rabbit. Rabbits, yep. Those rabbits again, they're everywhere. But no turn three Sisu. No, and now he does have another Flynn. Uh, yeah, that not having that Sisu is, it might make the difference between this game going Edmund's way or Jordan's way. It's definitely a different game. I think both players are not on their ideal draw. <laughs> yes. But it's also worth noting that Jordan, without that Sir Hiss... Um, of course, the aerial will come into play and shut down the frenemy on its own, so that isn't a worry. But yeah, not having that Sisu um, is definitely going to make this a different game. Yeah. Mother knows best over here. And uh, let's see here. What else do you see? Is that we don't talk about Bruno? I think it's we yes. don't talk about Bruno. I will say, Mother Knows Best is a great card for Jordan to have. It is, it is the one, like, unconditional removal option as far as actions go. Most of the others care about the strength of Edmund's characters, and so Mother Knows Best is the one answer for strong, strong characters. Yeah. Yeah, it's so interesting, all these cards that are, they have an action that is dependent on a character's strength. Um, it makes it a very different game. That's true. So here we have, uh, we'll see Baroness. that better necessities. And we'll oh, see. that's, oh, he grabbed that with it. So he played the aerial and he took bare necessities into his hand. Yes. Passed. Now we did have the option to sing it there, but which we did not do, which Jordan did not do. So passing the turn back to Edmund. Uh, this is going to be a challenging game. Part of the problem is I think the longer this game goes, the more it favors the Ruby Amethyst deck. So Jordan won that first game by aggressively forcing Edmund to discard cards. And without that line, it's a little bit more difficult of a, of a game for Jordan. Edmund knows that Jordan has that big combo with Kida and Under the Sea available, and so he's going to be very careful about overextending and becoming vulnerable to that combo, the same way that players are, are used to playing around Be Prepared. So Jordan has to start thinking about gathering lore, I think, in the early game, if possible, and uh, trying to set him up self up for success because Edmund, as the game goes on, is just going to draw more and more cards. And uh, I don't know, it's going to be difficult to, to overcome Edmund's advantage there. Yeah, it, I think it's just going to be really interesting. Back and forth. Uh, there's that Prince John again. Yeah. 
That is true. So, the, so that's perhaps why we didn't see the be prepared or the, the bare necessities the bare earlier. Necessities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. We don't talk about Bruno sending the fox back, and then we will discard a card. Sure, which makes sense because that fox with the four strength, that was going to allow Flynn's ability to kick off so he, to gain the three lore. And so by returning that back to his hand, that guarantees that, that Flynn won't uh, kick off at the start of Edmund's next turn. Absolutely. And there's, a, a, I think, a fantastic hit on that. We don't talk about yeah. Bruno. Getting rid of that rabbit is, is Edmund wanted to play that mid game for sure <laughs> to get that hand advantage. I think the one way that Jordan gets out of the scenario is card advantage. There, he has plenty of cards with Diablo and with Prince John, which will allow him to draw a lot of resources to perhaps flood the board and then deal with Edmund. And so... If he can get a Diablo online here in the next little bit and continue to take advantage of Prince John's ability, perhaps that card advantage will allow him to, to overcome the advantage that I think Ruby Amethyst has in the late game. Yeah. What do you think that Edmund is looking for at this point in, in the game? Uh, another another rabbit. Another rabbit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he needs, he need, or friends. He needs friends. That is true. Friends or rabbits. So there's a couple things he's got going on here. One is he does have the frenemy on board, and so if he can play anything with three mm -hmm. or four strength, that forces Jordan to respond. And speaking of a card with four strength, here yes. we have Madam and Fox coming down and taking care of that aerial spectacular singer. And again, it'll be available to activate frenemy, so Jordan has to deal with it unless he wants to give Edmund a free three lore. Which the fox does have two damage on it, so it's possible that Ursula could maybe challenge into the fox. Yes, I think Ursula could clean that up uh, pretty well, but but it is that reduces uh, some flexibility here. Ursula is a card that could sing ch could sudden sing. chill, for example, yeah. and so now Edmund having to make the decision: Do I sing with a different character, perhaps making Prince John vulnerable, which you don't want to do, um, or do I take care of the fox? Uh, these are the decisions you have to make. All these small decisions that all add up. It, I, have, I talked about it with Brendan earlier. It's all those little tiny decisions that add up that help uh, somebody win or lose a game. And that's the interesting thing about Lorcana. Sometimes, you know, this simple decision about what to ink in a particular turn, it's this card or that card, can have huge ramifications in the late game. And you can often point back in a game that you've lost to a very specific moment to an innocuous decision and point to that as the one where the game turned. This is interesting. He inked Bare Necessities, actually, and then used the two ink available to him to play Sudden Chill instead of singing um, with Prince John and uh, did go ahead and challenge with his Ursula into Madame Mim Fox. Yeah, I, I, Jordan is definitely looking at Edmund's hand. He knows he got rid of the rabbit, and so definitely trying to put as much pressure on Edmund's hand as possible. And we have... Edmund with one lore on the board. <laughs> yeah, there's the goat lore. <laughs> the goat lore. Uh, Merlin goat, of course, a card that everybody loves. Again, loves to love or loves to hate. Uh, very thematic uh, since we saw his uh, carpet bag revealed. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but this is a card that gains a lore whenever he enters and leaves play. Uh, critically here, though, it's a card with four strength, which will turn on Frenemy. Frenemy uh, will see uh, Merlin go to the start of the next turn, so Jordan has to think about that again unless he wants to give Edmund uh, a free three lore. Yes, which uh, is, <laughs> I'm sure he does not want to do. <laughs> no, not at all. So again, I think Jordan's strategy here is working on Edmund's hand size. So he'd love to draw into some more discard. Um, we do have the Diablo available there. Without the shift, it'll take a turn to set up and get online. Uh, so that's a card that Jordan would love to have available right now because Edmund's way back into this game is drawing more cards. So if we can get a Diablo online, uh, that would be great. So uh, Mother's Knows Best on the goat, which did give Edmund an, another lore. That is true. It gives him one lore, but it, it critically turns off turns that off frenemy flight. lore. And, you know, if Edmund wants to get that goat on the board, we have to spend a whole nother turn playing it again. Mm -hmm. So Jordan trying to maintain tempo here, yeah. trying to keep Edmund on his heels. Uh, Edmund can play the goat again, but it's going to take a, a turn to do so. Yeah. And then, of course, even if he does get the goat down, that doesn't help with Flynn's ability until all the way until next turn. Oh, and what a play. So so here, Edmund top-decked a friend from the other side. With a goat in play, he sings from the, from the other side and gets two lore. Uh, bouncing that goat, as unappealing as it is uh, to give your opponent a lore, prevented that friend from the other side from being sung there. Yeah. And here we have the Madame Medusa, the perfect answer to the At Diablo. Jordan is, is definitely sad to see that bird go. 
Yes, uh, Edmund's very happy, though. That bird is can be quite a nuisance, flying around, looking for all the trouble it can find. All the cards. You get <laughs> a card, cards. I get a card. Mm -hmm. You get a card, I get a card. Yes. Uh, so <sighs> fun fact about Diablo, he appears in pretty much every scene that Maleficent is in, in the movie, in Sleeping Beauty. Fascinating. Yes. I didn't know that. I have to take a look. <laughs> Definitely a, a malevolent presence, though, throughout the movie. Yes. And a strong presence here in the Emerald deck. Indeed. So here, unfortunately for Jordan, not a lot he can do. He does have the Under the Sea card. Unfortunately, with the current board, it only affects Frenemy uh, if he wants to sing it. The other option is Cricky, a card with uh, that can come down and give three lore. Also gives strength to Jordan's characters, but there's nothing to challenge him to. Yeah. So Jordan questing here with Sir Hiss for one, inviting the challenge there for Madame Medusa, perhaps, and passing the turn back over to Edmund which Edmund will get that three lore off of uh, the Flynn Rider this time because of Madame Medusa having that four strength. So finally, finally Flynn was able to run away with some lore here in this game. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and Madame Medusa there available to sing those, that friends from either side, getting Edmund those cards. Again, Jordan would love to have Diablo in play right now, but Madame Medusa taking care of that. So I think this is a, this is a critical few turns here with mm -hmm. the bounce of the... Uh, goat followed by removal of Diablo. Uh, the removal of Diablo really might be one of the key plays for this game. Yeah, interesting. He is inking another goat there and, and played the Maleficent to draw another card. Uh, just looking for more answers to make sure he can stay ahead in this game. Yeah, just watching his hand size, making sure that what matters more to him right now is hand advantage, not lore. But speaking of which, with three ah. characters on the board with two strength, it feels like the perfect time to send them to the bottom of the library, or the bottom of the deck, rather. Um, so Jordan singing under the sea and then challenging into Madame Medusa yes. after the cricket play. So cleared up Edmund's board there pretty effectively. Yes, those, those cards are going to be on the boss's plate for sure. <laughs> for dinner. So now, wow, things have swung as far as the board state goes. Yes. With Prince John and Cricky, we're representing five lore on board, six with the Ariel. So Jordan could start to chip away at the lore lead there. Edmund, of course, uh, with, uh, with the Rush character there, Madame and Fox, taking care of Prince John. Uh, not a card that Jordan likes to see go, but forced to use it in that scenario. Yeah. Yeah, that Cricky really came down at a, a lucky time for Jordan. That is true. <laughs> it is a lucky bug. Lucky bug. Cricky, if anyone doesn't know, is the lucky cricket from the movie Mulan. <laughs> I love that these, like, literally very tiny characters in this case <laughs> showing up in Lurkana. Characters that, you know, aren't, you know, it's not the, the Mickey Mouse or the Simba from Lion King. You have, you have Cricky. You know, showing yeah. up here in the game. It's super fun. Some of the, some of the most innocuous, uh, yes. small, fun characters doing the most work. Yes. Bare Necessities coming down here. Jordan choosing to discard the friends from either side from Edmund's hand. And then challenging into uh, the Merlin Fox. Merlin Fox, a card that Edmund's happy to get off the board, but also uh, Aerial Spectacular Singer, susceptible to the two brawls that Edmund has. So knows he's likely to lose the Aerial anyway, or at least it's possible. And then Edmund drawing into a rabbit. There's uh, another rabbit. A rabbit. Yes. It's one of the cards that he wants to see. So where Edmund was down to just a few cards in hand, a couple cards in hand at one point, now managing to regain that card advantage and having gotten rid of that Diablo, mm. uh, it's just you see the advantage swing the other way here. Yeah, and then putting down that Queen's Castle and moving Rabbit over there. Uh, I love having rabbits in the castle. Uh, did you know that rabbits like uh, to hang out in the Queen's Castle? <laughs> I did not, but apparently it's true. He looks happy there. <laughs> yes, very happy. Um, because if you somehow, if, if Jordan's able to banish the rabbit, uh, Edmund gets to draw a card. But if it stays there, he gets to draw an extra card That's at the true. beginning of the turn. So it's kind of nice for the rabbit to just hang out there at the Queen's Castle because either way, you're getting a card. And that's absolutely true. And Queen's Castle here doing double duty. Not only is it a difficult card for Jordan to deal with, forcing to devote resources to removing it, um, otherwise Edmund advances his win condition, getting 20 lore, um, or it draws him a card at the start of the turn. Yes. But uh, Ed Jordan, with the cards in play to deal with it... He does have bare necessities, and a brawl goes into the discard there. Yeah, double check. Cricky uh, with three strengths, or Hiss with two strength, and Ariel all could get rid of that castle to prevent that card draw, but Jordan now having to devote characters to getting rid of the castle, um, or quest or sing. So Edmund forcing him in a position there to deal with the castle and the card draw, or 
to quest for four lore. Jordan, they're opting to quest for four to even up the lore total. Yes, and so he did get to draw two cards there at the start of his turn because of the rabbit being at the castle. And I believe it looks like Jordan's hand got emptied out on the, his last turn. So he doesn't have uh, anything, any options right now uh, at the mercy of the top card of his deck. Yeah, we see a, and then we see a broom come into play. Uh, Magic Broom Illuminary Keeper is yes, a fun card. That is a fun card. Whenever you play another character, you may banish that character to draw a card. So Edmund choosing to use that immediately after playing Frenemy, drawing another card, and we draw into a Maui, which will make quick work of Qu Cricky, banishing Cricky and sending it to the discard pile. Yes. Maui is another one of those cards that it's been around since sent, set one and has always had a strong place in any Ruby deck. It's one of those automatic includes when you're building a Ruby deck. It's a, it's a very good card. And this one's a particularly beautiful card. The enchanted yes, version the enchanted. there in play. I love to see it. So Jordan, thinking about his outs here, not a lot available. I didn't see what's in his hand. But it's going to be difficult to come back from this. Really, what he needs is a Diablo or something to draw more mm -hmm. cards. Unfortunately, he knows that Edmund has brawls available, uh, unless they've been inked, which I didn't didn't see. Um, I think we also have a be prepared, so it's just it's a challenging position to be in. Yeah, he. I think he did. Oh, there's. Uh, you have forgotten me. So the two cards that Edmund did have in hand are oh, going okay. into are... the discard. Another broom and that be prepared. So the beep card is gone. That's nice. So Edmund forced into top deck mode. Unfortunately, going to draw an extra card from the castle there. So two cards at the start of the turn, maintaining that card advantage he's had, it yes. seems, for the last few turns. And then he also gets the three lore for Flynn, of course, having that Maui on board with the, the most strength between the two players. And the two from the castle. So things are really getting out of hand here if Jordan wants to... To rein him in, he's going to have to do it soon. Brawling oh. the aerial, and it just escalated so quickly there. Um, and the Ruby Amethyst deck walking away with a victory. Wow. wow. That was a game. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was a fantastic game. 